Okay, here we go. Applying water on Arches uh, cold press paper, watercolor paper. I sketched in the feathers as you can see. And now I'm applying water just where I want the paint to go, the watercolor paint to go. Um, this is the wet on wet technique that I'm gonna be doing. So now here is the paint. This is called charging, where you take a little bit of pigment on your brush and you just drop it in there and watch it bleed. It's really quite beautiful when you, when you see it and mix in colors together. It's just the funnest thing in the world. So now I'm doing the edges. Now the, the pigment is going only where the water uh, is, where I put the water. Now I'm doing the edges and I'm careful with the edges because I want them to be soft, like a feather. Um, and I'm watching it as it bleeds in. So here's like the second or third charging drop in of pigment there. And uh, you can see the paper really absorbs. This is cold press watercolor paper, which really absorbs water. It's really the only paper to do this technique on. If you do it on hot pressed, you won't get the same bleed. Now I'm taking, um, this is kind of more in the um, edges of more of a darker color on the edges, um, a brown, I think I mixed a, a brown with some of the blue that I use. This is phthalo blue, I believe, mixed with maybe a little um, red or something, um, or brown to dull it down a little bit. Uh, so now again, I'm just doing the edges. I really want to get that bleed effect, which you can tell right there on the top part of the feather. And holding my brush straight upright like that gives me a point and more control of the brush. So I get, even though I'm not gonna get detail using this method, I get a little bit more than just a bleed. Now you can see the feather on the left, which is a blue jay feather, which is from my yard. And a lot of blue jays last summer. Um, you can see the little stripes or spots there. So I'm, I'm putting those in and now watercolor lightens up tremendously, almost about half. So it's very wet right now. So the colors are pretty vibrant. The blue is pretty vibrant, but when it dries, it definitely dulls down a little bit. So I usually go pretty heavy on my first layer, knowing I'm going, it's going to be, it's going to lighten up almost 50%. So here you go, here I'm, I'm putting in, uh, I think this is actually gold, um, a gold watercolor. I will put the colors that I use down in the description below. Now I'm using a card to get the center, to get the vein, to get that line. And what happens is it's like a crease in the paper and the paint just absorbs right in that area. So it's kind of a cool technique. It only works when the paper is pretty wet and here you can see I'm just um, doing some of the edges there of the feather with a grayish color using the tip of my, um, of my brush. So now you can see the feather on the left is dry and the one on the right, I did the same technique. I just used some different colors and it looks like a turquoise blue and a Payne's gray I did for the base coat on this one I'm working on now. Then I let it dry a little bit and now I'm going in with burnt sienna and I didn't do too much. I just like put in a load of paint, a load of pigment and just let it sit there. And because it was a little wet, it bled um, kind of nicely how, how I liked it. Now, because it's still a little wet, the card turned out pretty well for that vein in the middle as you, as you could see. I jumped ahead here. I did a couple feathers. Uh, again, same technique, wet on wet. And some of the little areas there that don't have any paint on them, like say the feather on the left, I just didn't put any water. Like I'm applying the water now. I left a few areas without water. So the paint won't go where the water is not, unless I you know, purposely go over it. But if I just drop the paint in there, the paint is only, the pigment is only gonna go where the water is. So now this is Payne's Gray, 
and I am using the feather on the right, the black feather, as my reference, as my specimen. Um, again, this is a feather from my backyard. It's black. I don't think it's a blue jay feather this time. Um, but yeah, we definitely have these black birds coming by. It's pretty cool. So um, I have masking fluid. You can see that yellow stuff. It's like a, a glue, a safe glue to go over um, the paper. It won't tear the paper when you take it off. You can paint right over it. Then when you take it off, the paper is there and you still, you've preserved your white uh, paper underneath. So now I'm, I'm basically just kind of playing around, um, letting it blend, seeing what the paint does. I don't want to go too dark right now because I want to get these feathery edges. As you can see, I'm working on it with my really pointy uh, tip of the brush there. And um, again, another tip when you hold the brush kind of straight up, which I'm not really doing here, but um, then you get a really fine point and have more control of the brush. So now I'm kind of hanging around in this area and really dropping in the pigment and just waiting and seeing what happens. And I'm preserving that, that little white area, that little white spot right there. I'm purposely not going over that. Picked up some more pigment, dropped it in there. Um, I think the color is um, sepia and Payne's gray. Those are the two colors I'm working there now. I might have picked up a little bit of black um, just to get some depth there, but Black alone is really flat, so you always want to add a color to it, like blue or red or something, so you have you have some kind of um, depth to it. Otherwise, it just looks really flat. So I'm kind of taking my time here, as you can tell. Um, I'm really want, I'm really trying to capture on the right there where that separation of the feather is. And then the and then the bottom part of the feather where it really the, the two of those tiny areas, tiny feathers kind of branch out. So I'm being careful not to get too much pigment on there, but enough to where it it blends in, it bleeds in and looks really natural. So there. So I got my edge where I wanted it, letting it dry, and now I'm focusing on the middle. Again, I'm not gonna make the feather as dark as the one on the right, as the original. That's the whole thing with, with art and with painting. It, uh, you do what you wanna do. It's your creation. So I'm creating, I'm actually looking at the lights and the darks and the way it glistens with the light. Um, and I'm just kind of grabbing what I'm seeing and putting it down there and playing around and seeing seeing what the paint does, seeing what the pigment does. And so this is kind of nice because you can really see that the, the paper is really wet and it's really bleeding. And I could put a lot, a lot of paint on there right now and it, it really will absorb Now I'm doing the edge and the paper, the area is starting to dry a little bit because if you notice that that edge, that line, it's, it's kind of staying there. It's not blending or it's not dissolving. So, which was my, my plan. I didn't want the paper super, super wet because now I want to get, I want to get a little detail in there and a little uh, more structure to the feather. So I, so that blue that I added was, um, was a turquoise blue, I think phthalo turquoise blue, just up there on the edge. And I'm, I'm very gently um, adding color to it, as you can tell. So this was a mixture of black and a phthalo blue, and I just dotted, I just dropped in color from the top to the bottom. So it got it got all wet again, so this would technically be the second layer. Now again, I'm trying to get structure. So I let it dry a little bit, and now while it, before it gets too dry, I do the vein again, and I let it dry. And you can see 
look how how much it um, lightened up after it dried I mean that was definitely 50% so now I'm taking um, a pretty strong load of pigment sorry about that glare there and what I'm doing now is I picked up I left this part in because I picked up and I, know you could, I was out of focus but or out of the scene I'm moving my paper around I don't always have it on the the easel I have to pick it up and move it around because that's what watercolor is it's a it's a medium it's water medium and you need to kind of tilt it and this way and that way and it's okay to have the water move the pigment where you want it to go so um, a lot of times I'll just pick it up and move it around so there you go the black one on the right see how light that um, dried like practically gray it wasn't even black so but I like it I didn't want to go too too dark I didn't want it to overwhelm all the other colors there so now what I'm doing is taking off I'm making sure it's dry now I'm taking off the masking fluid and I'm using a little piece of tape just regular artist tape to take it off I really don't like using my finger if I don't have to use my finger I don't but anytime I take off masking fluid, I always wash my hands first to make sure they're just really dry, bone dry, so you don't get any oils or anything on your final artwork. So here we go. Um, masking fluid is off. You can see where the ones on the left, after I took the masking fluid off, you can see the white of the paper coming through and it really creates this beautiful contrast. And there we go, the finished watercolor feathers. So I did some splashes and some water with the feather, the black feather, coming out a little bit and uh, created a little messy situation on a few of the feathers. I will be having another tutorial on that. So if you like to know when that one comes out, please subscribe and set the alert bell so you'll know when that one comes out. Thank you so much for watching and please leave comments below how you like this video and what other videos you would like to see. Thank you for watching.